Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday night edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight, new momentum from New York. Donald Trump runs away with most of the delegates in the Empire State, while Senator Ted Cruz gets shut out. According to Politico.com, the enormity of the Trump victory has prompted many GOP elites to embrace a new reality when it comes to the delegate count at this summer's convention in Cleveland. Headlined, Trump's real magic number is less than 1237, a portion of the article reads, the whisper conversations about this indeterminate real number that Trump must hit by June 7th reveal a growing, if reluctant, consensus among party officials and establishment Republicans that if he gets close enough, they can't take the nomination away. Last night, celebrating his landslide win, Trump at the Trump Tower again took aim at the current delegate selection process. It's really nice to win the delegates with the votes. You know, it's really nice. Nobody should take delegates and claim victory unless they get those delegates with voters and voting. And that's what's going to happen. And you watch, because the people aren't going to stand for it. It's a crooked system. It's a system that's rigged. And we're going to go back to the old way. It's called you vote and you win. For more on the story, we welcome in now the former three-term Republican senator from New York, Alphonse D'Amato. He remains a powerhouse not only in the Empire State, but across the country. And Al, it is so good to have you here on Newsmax Prime tonight. Nice to be with you, Jay. Now, uh, some of his supporters feared that Donald Trump would not get to that 50% plus one number he need to sweep up all the at-large delegates, plus almost all the delegates from the state's congressional districts. But as it turns out, Trump wins by a landslide 60% of the vote, picks up at least 89 delegates. Maybe he'll pick up a couple more. What's your reaction to Donald's big win last night? Well, this... Um picks up his campaign. He had uh, those who thought that, for example, in Wisconsin, and he had the Colorado caucus, et cetera, uh, where he was uh, shut out, uh, that he was in decline. This gives him momentum. It gives him a shot at getting to 1237, which he needs to clinch the nomination. Um, and um, it certainly is going to put him right within striking distance if he doesn't get there. Uh, the forthcoming states, it gives him a big boost in them, and, and he's leading in Pennsylvania, he's leading in New Jersey and Connecticut, etc. So uh, I think he has that momentum back, and he's, he's obviously going to be difficult to beat. And uh, he has a good chance of getting 1237 before the convention convenes. Now, with that in mind, uh, we understand that you've been so in support of John Kasich, but you've also been quoted as saying that Trump has a good chance to be the nominee. And if that is the case, you'd like to see a Trump Kasich ticket. Why? Well, let me say this to you. I was attracted to John uh, early on um, uh, because no a Republican has ever been elected. Uh, to the White House, ever been elected to become president of the United States in the history of the Republican Party if he did not carry Ohio. That hasn't changed. If you don't carry Ohio and you're a Republican, you're not going to win. Now, there are some new demographics, uh, and that is you've got to carry Florida as well. I think Donald will do well in Florida. He did it in the primary. But in order to carry Ohio, I think the cement would be John Kasich. And so I think that would make, and by the way, he brings, he would bring to the office experience, experience in dealing uh, with the, the Congress. He was the Budget Committee Chairman. He was on the Armed Services Committee. Two areas, the economy and national defense, uh, he could be invaluable. Um, I don't know if he would take it, but it's pretty hard to take to turn down a nomination if if offered. So I think that would be a very powerful combination, and I think he could help uh, uh, Donald not only in the campaign, 
but if uh, he were to be elected, uh, he certainly would be invaluable. Well, certainly, Al, you and I worked with John Kasich on Capitol Hill. We saw firsthand his effectiveness as the Budget Committee chairman in the House. But let me, let me put out an alternative scenario. If John Kasich were to unite with Ted Cruz instead of Donald Trump, do you think that uh, Cruz could uh, secure the nomination? And would a Cruz-Kasich ticket be a winning combination? Well, again, uh, it would ensure you of winning Ohio uh, because unlike lots of governors who get elected the second time, uh, their numbers go down. In John Kasich's case, uh, he is still held in high regard by Democrats, Republicans, and independents in his states. So I think Kasich would be a great addition. But let me ask you, um, how do you get there? Do you deny someone the nomination who by uh, uh, popular vote has accumulated millions more than anybody close to him. If he's very close to 237 and you pull that rug out from under him, uh, do you risk offending uh, uh, many, many of uh, not only his supporters, but people uh, who would feel that their vote has been, has been wasted, taken away? Do you risk alienating uh, a substantial part of the Republican base. And that's what they've got to weigh up. Uh, the, the people, uh, uh, some of the so-called insiders who want to reverse this Rule 40B. Uh, they should never have enacted 40B. That was uh, something that Mitt Romney and his uh, clique put together so that they could stop uh, Rand Paul. And by the way, they didn't have to do it. But they didn't want any, any trouble at the convention. And what's trouble? I mean, somebody putting forth somebody else's name, a candidate, you had the delegates. So they overplayed their hand. Rule 40B uh, is absolutely ridiculous. But to do away with it now in order to deprive someone uh, of, of the nomination uh, and try to go to somebody who maybe didn't even participate uh, in the process, I think would be a mistake. And uh, to that, Donald Trump last night during his victory speech took aim at uh, Senator Cruz. Let's listen and watch. We don't have much of a race anymore based on what I'm seeing on television. Senator Cruz is just about mathematically eliminated. And we've won another state. As you know, we have won millions of more votes than Senator Cruz, millions and millions of more votes than Governor Kasich. We've won, and now, and especially after tonight, close to 300 delegates more than Senator Cruz. We touched on this earlier, but it's, it's worth amplifying, Al. We ran a column the other day by Randy Levine, president of the Yankees, a former deputy New York City mayor, a Republican who says he's outraged that Trump may lose the nomination. Randy argues it's because of those arcane delegate rules you referenced earlier, and they're the real danger that that might thwart the will of the people. Uh, sounds like you and Randy are in agreement on this. Well, it's a pretty hard thing to say to people, uh, here's someone uh, who is uh, substantially in the lead and uh, may fall a couple of votes short of the 237. And, and yeah, we can do it legally. We can pull the nomination, uh, go to a second and third ballot and, and elect. And by the way, unless you did away with the rule, the only other person who would be eligible would be who? It would be Ted Cruz. Um, and it, it doesn't look like they would give it to Cruz. Um, and so you're not gonna be alienating just one, but you'd be alienating Trump supporters and Cruz supporters. That's about 70% of those people who participated uh, if you gave it to a third person. I, I think that that would be very dangerous and very hard to sell to those people particularly who feel that Donald Trump has identified and Ted Cruz have identified some pressing issues. And if you would deny both of them the nomination, uh, I think that you would uh, be giving the Democrats a victory of overwhelming proportions.
Al, RNC Chairman Reince Priebus has come under heavy fire for the way he's handled the primaries and the campaign thus far. Uh, obviously, Donald Trump uh, has been quick to point out his uh, problems with the chairman. There's a feeling that if the party had a stronger national chairman, he could have perhaps uh, enforced more civility in the race. What's your opinion of the oh, job I, uh, Chairman Priebus has done? I think that's uh, an overstatement. Um, you can't blame him for candidates attacking each other. <laughs> that's, that's, that's silly. Um, number two, you can't blame him for an arcane rule, which was it should never have come in, it was put in four years ago. Number three, you really can't blame him uh, for states that set up a system uh, a, a year before the primary started. So I, I think that's putting too much uh, uh, blame on it. Now, if the Republicans as a, as a party want to come together and say uh, these are the minimum requirements as it relates to a primary and set out some standards, uh, that might be reasonable. But I wouldn't lay it at the door of the new chairman uh, who, who really had little, if anything, to do with the situation that we find ourselves in. Insights and analysis tonight from Senator Alphonse D'Amato. Al, it is so good to see you. We appreciate your perspective on what happened last night in your home state and what the situation may be ahead. Thank you so much, sir. My pleasure, J.D. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Well, you heard what the good senator had to say. Agree or disagree? Why don't you send your comments to me at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments or via Twitter at Newsmax Prime.